It's time for another episode of Chili Chats, where we interview folks from the travel and cruise industry world. To introduce today's guest, here's our host, Chili Falls. Hey, how you doing? Chili with Chili's Cruises here with another episode of Chili Chats. And my guest today is my friend, uh, Rona Nicholson, who's over there from Glasgow, Scotland. And just so you know, folks, Rona has been able to do something that so many of us want to do and haven't been able to. And that is the last two weekends, she got to go someplace other than home. So that's what we're going to talk about today is Rona going to Liverpool. Rona, welcome to Chili Chats. Oh, thank you, Chili. Why Liverpool? Um, I have been a fan of the Beatles music since I was very, very young. So that's really why I started going there was for the live music and so on. Um, and through that, I just through the years met lots and lots of different friends. Um, some of them stay locally to Liverpool. Others are from various parts of the UK, even further afield. Um, and so we just keep in touch and every so often we try to meet up there. Um, last two weekends were quite strange because of course there's no live music, so it did feel very strange, but we were still able to do a lot of good things and just test the waters out of lockdown. Nice. I, I, just on a side note, with <laughs> you traveling, mm -hmm. did you feel safe or were you a little worried? Were you, um, you know, well, anxiety or anything about traveling again? To be honest, I was a little bit anxious about taking the train. The train between Glasgow and Liverpool is about a four hour journey. And I thought people weren't really terribly respectful of the social distancing because you were supposed to strictly reserve a seat before you traveled. And before you got on the train, you know, you had to have your mask on and you had to show your reservation, which was all good. But once you got on the train, I found that someone was already sitting in my seat. Um, so rather than, you know, start World War Three, I just moved to an empty seat. And it was the same in the way back. And I wasn't the only customer who had that problem. So it's not the train line's fault, they're doing their best, but I think people are a little bit disrespectful of the rules that have been put in place. So yeah, we have that's the, that's the main problem we have in this country is mm -hmm. you know, th those of us that that want to do things right, it's it's okay. But yeah. there's so many people that just don't care, and that, that seems to be causing more problems. Okay, so I'm just, I pulled up a bunch of pictures off your Facebook post. And by the way, folks, I thoroughly have enjoyed uh, Rona's Facebook post through both weekends. So I can vicariously live through going to Liverpool. And all the times I've been in the British house, I was thinking about this again last night. I don't think I've ever been to Liverpool. And I've been, you know, I've covered British house top to bottom, but I, don't remember if I have, I don't remember it. All right, so Ron is just going to tell us about the pictures I pulled up. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, so this is me setting off in my first journey two weeks ago. Um, that's me in Glasgow Central Station, which did I have to say that felt quite safe because the seats were blocked off, so you didn't have someone right next to you, and there were people there to help with things. Um, so it's just my first kind of big journey and all felt a bit strange, yeah. Okay. Aha. Uh, this is um, at what's called Pierhead, Liverpool. And it's not the best photo because there are always people around there, but there is a statue of, or statues of the four Beatles there. It's always very popular, always quite crowded, peeping, people taking photos. Um, yeah, and there was actually a tiny bit of live music there. It was basically just a busker, so plenty of room to sit there, quite a lot of little benches and things, and easy to social distance, all good. Okay. Oh, right, okay, this is the Liver Building, very iconic building in Liverpool. Um, it's been there for over a hundred years, but only I think in the last year are you actually allowed to do a tour inside. 
where they take you almost right to the very top, great views out over Liverpool. Okay. And as you can tell, these are in no uh, no order, folks. I just grabbed <laughs> what I thought would be interesting. No, you're testing me here, Chile, to make sure I actually know where I am. Yes, this is another view um, from the top of the Liver building. And you can see one of the, it almost like the rectangular building. I think that's the Museum of Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is again the Liver building. And yeah. next to it is the Cunard building. And I believe that is a statue of Edward VII. And that's you in front of <laughs> Yeah, that's me. Um, <laughs> not too many photos of me, Chile, because one of the major problems I have here is I've not really been able to get a proper hairdressing appointment since um, February. So I did manage to get an emergency, just an appointment for a straightening of my hair. But the colour's a disaster, so... <laughs> That is one of the rare photos of me in front of the Liver building. Yeah, well, and I think indeed. it looks lovely. All right, it's one of the nice. things that fascinated me is you made a, a reference to a proper pub breakfast. Well, of course, you know, that always interests me because it has to do with food. Is that a proper <laughs> pub breakfast? That is chilly, but that one is actually a veggie breakfast because I'm a vegetarian, so they are actually veggie sausages. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, veggie sausages, beans, <laughs> potatoes, and some kind of toast and eggs, right? That's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well, that, that, that'd be right up my alley, huh? You know. Yeah, and if you want the meaty version, there was another photo somewhere that my friend had. Uh, she had meaty sausages, and I don't know if you guys know about black pudding. <laughs> um, I have tasted black pudding. Oh, have you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what's in it. I think to me it's something that I didn't want to know about. No, I, I think, and especially me being a vegetarian, I really don't want to know what's in it. But my friend thoroughly enjoys hers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and that's one oh, of your friends. Are, yeah. That's my friend Cara. Yeah. Um, I love going in breaks with Cara because I think I'm pretty well organised, but she is super organised which is a bit of a treat. So you just basically turn up and she's already got an itinerary of things to do. Awesome. And that's all, that's, that was just flicking back, Chile. That was the Anglican Cathedral in Liverpool behind there, okay. which I'm ashamed to say I have never actually been inside, but okay. I'll maybe do it on my, ne my next visit. I think it was still closed to some extent this time. Oh, and that was in a rooftop bar. Yeah. yeah. No problems getting in. We had to make an appointment. We had a time slot, all good. And this is this place is Matthew Street in Liverpool, where the famous Cavern Club is, where the Cavern Beatles Club, used yes. to play. Admittedly, this Cavern Club, it's not on the exact same site, but it's very close by. This street would normally be absolutely jam-packed with people, bars, goodness knows what. But I think that was actually quite early in the morning. That's one reason why it's quiet, but it's just not quite as busy just now with yeah. things taking off. But normally that's a very, very busy spot. And the Cavern Pub. This is the Cavern Pub, yeah. And that is a statue of um, John Lennon outside it, yeah. Right. And you mentioned the statue at... Uh... Oh, there's a of quieter the spot. Yeah, I've actually managed to take a selfie because sometimes it's quite difficult to get photos by the Beatles statue because it's always very crowded. But there, I've managed it this time, yeah. Awesome. Uh, and then this one. Ah, yes. They do have a thing. It's called the Beatles Experience or the Beatles Story, I think. And you go in on your headphones and you go around various exhibits. Um, admittedly, it's been quite a while since I did it. But they do have a separate cafe, which is now open. And, you know, even pre-COVID, it's always quite well distanced. The tables are quite a bit apart. So you can get to sit in peace and they always have Beatles music in the background. It's just a cafe like Starbucks and... They have a few different bits and pieces and they have a shop upstairs where you can buy stuff. 
Ah, now that's read on one of my journeys home. That is in one of the pubs. Um, it's just some of the photos in the wall in the pubs. Um, I wasn't sure what the pubs would be like after lockdown. I have to say I was very impressed. This chain of pubs, you could just sit at your table and order things via the app. Food and drinks got brought over quickly. All good, no problem at all. Nice. And that is the <laughs> former home. This of... is a for yeah, this is a former home of George Harrison. Yeah. I think he lived there from I can't remember exactly what age he was when he moved in, but I think he moved out around about 1960 when he'd maybe be about 16 or so. Um, the story behind this house, myself and my friend went to visit it and had a really good look inside. My friend, Cara, who was on the previous photo, she lives in Bristol, but she's relocating to Liverpool. And she has a period of about two months before her house sale goes through. So she is renting George's former home for about two months. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that would be pretty cool. All right, one more here, and we'll flash this one up. All right, that is in, a, the, in the background there. That is the Town Hall of Liverpool. Um, Castle Street, quite a well-known street that now has a lot more outdoor seating for bars, etc. Um, we stayed in a hotel that was just on that street. Um, no problem at all. They are getting served. Um, just sit down. Someone comes to your table. Get your drinks, pay. All good. All right. Now, while I got you on a chilly chat, I have to ask <laughs> you to, my main my main questions that I ask everybody. Uh, in the cruises you've taken, yeah. what was your favorite cruise or favorite cruise ship? Ooh, that is going to be quite, almost impossible to answer, Chile, because I've actually just enjoyed all of them. I'm quite new to cruising, so I've only been in four ships. I've been in the Holland, America, New Amsterdam. The other ones were Norwegian ones, Getaway, Breakaway and Joy. It's impossible, I think, to pick a favourite, but I was fortunate enough to do the joy in March, just before everything went belly up. And I particularly enjoyed um, the observation lounge. So relaxing, so many nice places to sit. I could actually just have sat there for a full week. And an added attraction for me um, was, of course, the Cavern Club. So I was there on all the nights when the shows were on. So. I might be leaning a little bit towards the joy as a favourite ship just because of those two things. Okay. And your favourite port of call? Again, I don't think I've got a particularly favourite port of call, but I have enjoyed all the Mexican ports that I've done. I've done some in the East Coast and I did some on the West Coast last time. Couldn't pick a particular favourite, but I would go with the Mexican ports because found the people to be extremely friendly and it just had a really good vibe to it. So I'm a Mexico fan, yeah. That's great. Well, Rona, I thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your journey with us uh, and we'll talk to you real soon. And thank that's you. it for today, folks. I'll see you <laughs> next time on Chili Chats. Thank you for watching today's chat. We hope you will join us next time as we discuss various facets of the travel and cruise industry. Chili Chats is a production of Chili's Cruises and hosted by Chili Falls.